but our processes and how we manufacture and produce our designs. When we look at our overall design theme, we're always looking at how we incorporate what we call people, planet, water. Incorporating that theme into our people-centered design, our total, total design, and the total bathroom design, as well as total everywhere. As I go through this presentation today, I'm going to really highlight people, planet, water, and total, total design including the way that we go after sustainable design. One very important part of our sustainable journey is we engage in a program we call eco-design. Eco-design gives us the opportunity to incorporate life cycle assessment carbon footprinting. As you look at LCAs and understand how to use carbon footprinting to measure the success of the processes by which you manufacture, design, and bring products to market, it's critically important to recognize that as we draw down that carbon footprint, we also draw down cost and how we manufacture. That total methodology has really evolved very nicely here in the Americas. In addition to that, we also go through looking at every aspect of that supply chain. If you could imagine the life cycle of a toilet, from the time that the clay is mined from the ground, to the time that it ends its life at the end of a 10 or 20 year life cycle in a home, every aspect of that toilet has been measured and analyzed, understanding the content of the energy embedded in every aspect of that, from the way that we mine the clay from the ground to the way that the plastic component parts are produced and brought to market, and also incorporating the manufacturing methodology. What was most interesting about this is coming to find out that actually the greatest amount of energy or carbon consumed in the manufacturing processes was actually in the usage in the home. Now you wouldn't think that usage in a home would consume energy, but in fact it does. What's most interesting is as we look at the carbon equivalency of our products, and by the way, this is a way that we use to measure the effectiveness of our sustainable journey we measured the carbon content. The first thing we started to do was just reducing water. Then we started looking at ways to reduce not only the water consumption, but also weight reduction, recycled content, adding also to that reduced energy usage in the processes of manufacturing. In that process, we engaged an organization called the NREL, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and came to find out that within every gallon of water, there is an embedded energy content. We call this the water energy nexus. Within every gallon of water that you consume and use in your home, there's 0 .0037 kilowatt hours of electricity in every gallon of water. That's really important. And let me explain to you why. As you look at the way that buildings use water, you know, there was a kickoff by the Department of Energy to go after what's known as the Better Buildings Challenge. Their goal was to reduce the energy content that, and the energy consumed in buildings and adult environment, HVAC, lighting, electrical work. But we also recognized that water was an important consumer of electricity, not in the building itself, but in all the processes that are used in the hydrogeological cycle to draw water out of the river, clean it up and make it drinkable, put it into the building, treat it after you've used it, take it back to the river and put it back again. All of that energy represents 0 0.0037 kilowatt hours per gallon of water. And I'll explain a little bit more about that as I get through this. But what was interesting is the city of Atlanta actually incorporated into this Department of Energy program the reduction in water consumption as well. And what that allowed them to do was to look at 48 million square feet of office space and retail space in the city of Atlanta for an opportunity for reduction in the content of energy used in HVAC and lighting, as well as reducing the amount of water consumed by toilets, urinals, faucets, and showers. What's also important in that design process is we can do all this wonderful work in life cycle assessment and carbon footprinting, but how do we portray that to the design community? For those of you who are using BIM modeling, building information modeling, and have been able to incorporate those BIM models into your Autodesk Rivet or your SketchUp designs, understanding how to draw out the environmental attributes that are important for a USGBC LEED certification is also critically important to your success. 
what we've done is worked with a little group called Eagle Scorecard to incorporate that message directly into the BIM model. You download the BIM model, you're going to get the Eagle Scorecard giving you all of the attributes and characteristics of that design's environmental footprint, especially those characteristics that are important for your submittal to USGBC for lease certification. Where this is also important is this document is a one-click document. You don't have to call up the supplier, you don't have to try and resource it. One mouse click will print this document out and provide you with the resource to submit that to USGBC. A very convenient, very easy way to get the environmental attributes of the products that are being produced in the bathroom space and put into that building. This is also important for those of you who are engaging in the program called the Living Building Challenge. And if you haven't become involved with that, please start to become aware of that program. The Living Building Challenge is looking at not only how the products will live in the space, but also at all of the attributes and characteristics of the manufacturing processes, the materials consumed, and the wastes coming out of the manufacturing process to produce that component. We've already done that. We've already produced all of those details, and in fact, we're already submitting to clients who are asking for what do you have in the way of details and documents to support the Living Building Challenge? And we have already done that, especially for a little company called Google, who wanted to put our products into their building. We were able to answer the questions because of the work that we've been doing for the past six years on LCAs and had the documentation in place to support that request. Now what's also interesting is, in this process, we've also been able to incorporate biomimicry and incorporate a theme called what we call the Oxbow concept. The Oxbow concept, or the Oxbow effect, is a very interesting concept. When we wanted to design a better urinal, right, make a better urinal to remove the waste that's in that urinal and not use anything more than a pint of water, we incorporated a biomimicry design and incorporated Oxbow effect. And what's Oxbow? And Oxbow is that funny little lake that gets created right here as a river flows in a flat plain. And the key concept to the oxbow effect is this. Water, whoops, water flows faster around the outside curve than it does on the inside curve. So what happens is, when you look at, and I'm getting kind of into the weeds here, but you look at the way that a trapway is designed, we use 3D solid modeling designs here to then come up with a standard trapway for a urinal. And we found out that by putting colored water in and flushing only one pint of water that we ended up with a, a concept of viscous shear and turbulent flow. This is the oxbow effect. Effectively, as the water flows across here, you see we get a separation of the two different colors. Fresh water coming in, blue water still retained. If you retain the blue water, that means you're going to have a smell. Not so good. But if you then change your design using biomimicry and using the oxbow effect, we then redesigned the trapway to make it specifically designed to enhance the characteristics of the hydrodynamic flows in that trapway. And as a result of that, we now are able to flush one pint of water, rinse the bowl completely, and remove any coloration in the trapway, thus no smell. So using biomimicry is a, if you wouldn't think, I mean, who would have thought you could have used biomimicry to design a urinal, of all things, right? But it's these kinds of sustainable practices that can be used in some of the more mundane products that we seem to forget about that can have a huge impact in the effectiveness and the quality of that product in its environment that we're going to actually install it.